and we call it the iPad. Everyone, this is FaZe and welcome to my channel. If you've been subscribed to me for a while, then you probably know how big of a fan I am of the iPad. And the iPad has come a long way and I've owned an iPad ever since its launch in 2010. And you fast forward around 14 years later and this device has become so much more powerful and a device that is so much more capable than what it was even originally meant to be. And this journey all started in 2010 when Steve Jobs got on stage to announce the iPad. And the user interface was directly inspired by the iPhone. It brought a sense of novelty while maintaining the intuitive ease that Apple users had come to love. Now, remember when Steve Jobs announced it, he said that he wanted this device to stand in between a smartphone and a laptop and that it would be great at doing some key tasks. And this is what Steve Jobs said. Everybody uses a laptop and or a smartphone. Is there room for a third category of device in the middle, something that's between a laptop and a smartphone. In order to really create a new category of devices, those devices are gonna to have to be far better at doing some key tasks. Things like browsing the web, doing email, enjoying and sharing photographs, watching videos, enjoying your music collection, playing games, reading eBooks. If there's gonna be a third category of device, it's gonna to have to be better at these kinds of tasks than a laptop or a smartphone. Otherwise, it has no reason for being. However, when he announced the device, it sort of got a lukewarm response. And I remember back in 2010, I was also kind of confused because to me, it almost just seemed like a blown up version of an iPhone or an iPod touch. And I just kind of expected more, not just me, but I think a lot of people in the media also expected some something different from Apple when it came to launching their tablet. I think it's a big, I pod touch mm -hmm. <laughs> um, or a big iPhone without the phone oh, aspect. Right. People were expecting something a little bit more revolutionary. I mean, after, after all is said and done, it's just a larger iPod in terms of functionality. Say no to the iPad. Just if you have an iPod touch, if you have an iPhone 3G or 3GS, you're not going to want to get the, the iPad. Just trust me on this. And unfortunately, a lot of people thought it was a device that was doomed to fail. And to be honest, I didn't pre-order the iPad right away. I, once again, like I said, I was kind of conflicted because I really liked my iPod Touch because at the time I was on Verizon and the iPhone was unavailable. So I had an iPod Touch that, was, that I was very happy with and I had my MacBook and I was very happy with that. So I didn't feel like there was a need for such a device, but that all changed when I went to the Apple store and uh, they had the uh, iPads in display and I picked one up and I used it and everything changed. I immediately fell in love. The experience was both magical and familiar because yes, if you've used an iPhone or an iPod touch, that experience was very similar to that. But because it was an iPad and it was a larger device, you had a larger canvas to work with. So all the apps were modified in a way that took advantage of the display. And I loved it. I remember I was at the Apple store and I was just kind of, you know, swiping through pages in Safari, reading some books, playing a few games. And I realized that I'm at this Apple store a lot longer than I really needed to be. So I remember I pre-ordered it right there on the spot and uh, couldn't wait to get my own. And to be very honest, I actually really liked the design as well of this first generation iPad. I really liked the extra heft to it and that squared off design. I thought it was very uh, comfortable to hold and it felt like a very unique device. And I told all my friends and family members that you have to go to the Apple store and try this device out before you make a judgment. Because yes, when you saw the keynote and you saw the commercials, you felt like it felt like a bigger iPhone. But until you picked it up, that's, that's where everything changes. And at the same time, the iPad's display was a very impressive display for its time. And of course, it seems very grainy and outdated now, but like I said, for its time, it was great. It offered superb image quality and opened up new possibilities for consuming movies and TV shows and also getting some slight work done because it came with the iWork suite. So it came with pages, keynote and numbers. The large screen was perfect for browsing the web, reading books, and watching content on it. And it was truly a game changer in the world of personal technology. And right after the iPad was announced, over the next few years, all these other companies were trying to create Android tablets to compete with the iPad. And to be very honest, every Android tablet that was coming out was deemed as the iPad killer, but none of them came close. Because the very next year, Apple came out with the second generation iPad, the iPad 2. We're going to introduce today iPad 2. 
the second generation iPad. And it was quite exciting because Apple kind of tweaked its design by a lot because Apple made it drastically thinner, drastically lighter, offering a more comfortable feel in the hand. And Steve Jobs, I remember said on stage too, that he wanted the iPad to be a device that you can easily just scoop up with one hand and start using it right away. And that's kind of the design that they went for for the iPad too. Really took its performance next level and it brought cameras to the iPad, both a rear facing camera and a camera for FaceTime calls. And now that I think about it, the iPad 2 is what the iPad 1 should have been. So yes, I got the iPad 2 and I remember I got it with the smart cover and it was so freaking cool. And uh, it was an experience that I'll never forget because I remember when the iPad 2 came out, it was almost hard to get your hands on one. Almost every store that I went to, it was kind of sold out. And uh, so I had to wait for it, but the wait was worth it because the iPad 2 was a truly remarkable device. And the year later, Apple came out with an all new iPad. And it's funny, they didn't call it the iPad 3 because it, in my opinion, wasn't as big of an update from the iPad 2. So they just called it the new iPad, uh, which I thought was interesting from a marketing perspective. Today, we're announcing the new iPad. This one came with the Retina display and that alone marked a significant upgrade for me. The iPad was a fantastic device and I absolutely loved it. And here you're getting a super high resolution display and uh, watching content on it was better than ever before. But if you put the display aside of the iPad 3 or the all new iPad as Apple liked to call it at the time, there wasn't a remarkable difference between the iPad 2 and the iPad 3. They looked the same. If anything, the iPad 3 got a hair thicker and heavier, but other than that, it wasn't a big upgrade from the iPad 2, unless you really wanted that super high res screen with the retina display. And when the third generation iPad was you know, announced, I think a lot of people, including myself, were beginning to think that the bezels feel very thick on the iPad. You know, you kind of want that all screen experience. Bezels were making the device seem a little dated. A year later, after the iPad 3, I'll still call it the iPad 3, um, Apple announced the iPad mini because there was this huge competition coming from these Android tablet makers that were coming out with a seven to eight inch display. And it was becoming a lot more popular because you also have to think that around that time, you know, phones were still around three and a half to four inches in terms of display size. So, you know, having a smaller iPad made sense, you know, not everyone wanted that 9.7 inch display. So Apple responded to the competition with an all new iPad mini. They took everything you love about the iPad and brought it to a smaller version. And because of its UI elements and the way iOS was developed, you got a lot more screen real estate, but I didn't buy it because I still like the 9.7 inch display of the standard iPad. I thought that was a great sweet spot, but the 7.9 inch display for a lot of people was great. And I think a lot of people jumped into that iPad mini and loved it. And what I specifically loved about it was not so much about the smaller screen. Cause like I said, I enjoyed the larger display. What I really liked about the iPad mini was its kind of new design. It had the diamond cut chamfered edges. And at the same time, the borders were drastically slimmed down, especially on the sides of the iPad. And it just felt like a modern version of an iPad. This is the design that Apple needed to make for the larger iPad. So I waited and waited for the iPad Air to be announced. And uh, that's where Apple basically brought the iPad mini and made a bigger version of it. And that's where you got the iPad Air. And it basically represented the ultimate version of a high performance tablet. It came with exceptional image quality. It was lightweight. They also added the lightning port, which was a much appreciated bonus, making charging and connectivity way more convenient. The iPad Air's overall sleek design and impressive performance quickly made it one of my favorite iPad models. And it's so cool that you got a large iPad, but it was also smaller because you still got the same 9.7 inch display, but because they really trimmed down the borders and the overall footprint of the device, it felt smaller, it felt lighter, and it felt more portable. Just when you thought that they couldn't go any thinner or lighter, Apple followed up with the iPad Air with the iPad Air 2, which was even thinner, even lighter, and it got a nice performance boost as well. So in the market, if you want an iPad, you can go for the standard iPad Air, which has a 9.7 inch display or the iPad mini with a 7.9 inch display. And you got those two screen sizes and that was pretty much it. I wanted to do more with my iPad. I loved my iPad every year when Apple came out with more software updates and they you know, created enhancements to the design and the OS. I was falling in love with the iPad more and more and I kind of wanted to use it as my main computer. And then you saw Microsoft with its Surface line of tablets and a lot of people were jumping to that. I still remember a lot of my friends were like, why do we need an iPad? I would just get a Surface, which is the best of both worlds. We got the tablet experience, 
And then you also would just attach the keyboard to it and you got a nice laptop like experience. And though I don't think the Surface was a successful computer in terms of it being a great tablet and a great laptop, it was 2015 when Apple finally responded to Microsoft's Surface line of tablets and came out with the iPad Pro. This is the iPad Pro. And you got a whopping 12.9 inch display. And it was a beautiful display and it came out with its own smart keyboard folio. And you also got an Apple Pencil. Apple is finally giving you an iPad that is meant to do creative things on, to, to do your utmost productivity work on. And this was something that got me very excited. I was in college at the time when Apple announced the iPad Pro and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. I pre-ordered it right away and when I got it, I fell in love with it, though I was a little disappointed. Not because of its design, not because of the Apple Pencil or the you know, smart keyboard folio. I was disappointed because it's a pro device, but it just felt like a blown up version of the traditional iPad. I feel like the operating system was not taking full advantage of that 12.9 inch display. Yes, by then Apple had introduced split screen and slide over and stuff like that. And you also got that with the other iPads, but I just felt like something was missing. I just felt like Apple wasn't taking advantage of its full processor and its speed and its size, or even the pencil and the keyboard. But once again, it was the first generation iPad Pro. From there on, it just became much, much better. And you know, from there, Apple came out with more OS updates that took advantage of the bigger display. Apple also introduced a 9.7 inch iPad Pro for those who wanted the iPad Pro experience, but in a smaller body. But it wasn't until 2018 when Apple announced the all new iPad Pro. And that's where everything changed. I think Apple always wanted to create a tablet that had an all screen display and you would just be consumed by the content and the content you can also create with it. So that all screen display on that 2018 iPad Pro was amazing and that squared off design was beautiful because like I said in the very beginning, I kind of like that squared off design that the original iPad sort of had because every other iPad after it just felt like a bigger iPod touch. Not that that's a bad thing, but I felt like you kind of went away from that premium look and feel. And Apple kind of brought that back in 2018 with that new design. And over the years, they came out with a lot more updates to iPad OS that took advantage of the display, took advantage of its processing power. You got trackpad support for the very first time and you got a magic keyboard with the trackpad and a backlit keyboard keyboard, the Apple Pencil became a lot more powerful and useful over the years. And now it's 2024 and you've got the iPad Pro with a 13 inch display and an 11 inch display. The overall look and feel is very similar to that 2018 iPad Pro, but it's become drastically thinner and lighter, which makes it even more portable. And it's got the M4 chip, which is amazing to have on a tablet. And it now has fully replaced my MacBook. I mean, I never thought that the iPad would one day replace my Mac. I never ever thought that. And here in 2024, we've come to that point where for most people, the iPad is the ultimate computer. Now I said most people, not everyone, because I still feel like the iPad is a great computer, but not the perfect computer for a lot of people. And though it may be great for me, may not be great for you. And I've done an entire video on how the iPad Pro has replaced my computer and what my thoughts are on this device as being my main computer. So if you wanna check that video out, you can click the link above or in the description below. So now when you look at the iPad lineup, it's become really, really nice. So now all the iPads have that same squared off design as the iPad Pro, and I find that to be very, very beautiful. So let's start off with the iPad mini and work its way up in terms of what you have in 2024. You've got an iPad mini with an 8.3 inch display, and if you want something a little bigger than that, you have the standard iPad with a 10.9 inch display. And if you really wanna start using your iPad more and more as a computer, and, you want it, and you're really serious about note taking and drawing and being productive on it, then you've got the iPad Air, both an 11 inch and a 13 inch model. And if you are a professional or a graphic designer or a video editor, and you're really into content creation and want a device that is great for productivity, that can take full potential of the M4 chip, then you have the iPad Pro. So if you look at from the original iPad that was launched in 2010 and fast forward to 14 years later, Apple has done a lot to the iPad lineup. Like I said in the beginning, it was just a blown up version of an iPhone or an iPod Touch, and now it's competing with the Mac. Now you can be much more productive on an iPad, and it's just a fun device overall because I can still take it out of its keyboard and just use the iPad for what it's meant to be, right? To read eBooks and browse the web and enjoy my music collection, enjoy videos, what the iPad was intended for. Having said that though, I always wanted the iPad to do more. 
right? I always wanted to create content and now I can do that. In fact, this whole video that you're watching right now, in fact, all the videos on my channel have been edited on the iPad. The iPad is for me the most magical device. It's my favorite Apple product, but I also wanna know what you like. You know, what were your thoughts when Steve Jobs announced the original iPad? And what are your thoughts on the iPad lineup right now? Comment below, let me know, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I'll see you next time.